Coming up on today's episode of Technoid, Apple's switching their MacBook CPUs to ARM-based processors by 2021, and also some updated USB protocols, Xiaomi has released a brand new flagship smartphone, which I have kind of hinted at in the past, but more information on that in today's episode, and also as a follow-up from yesterday's episode, I'm going to discuss why Apple killing the, head the lightning port is a big, big mistake. All that on today's episode, so stay tuned. <laughs> What's up everybody, Michael here, welcome back to Technoid. Hope you're all having an excellent, excellent day. Um, as you know, I finally did it. I made a full week of episodes and we're not stopping here because if you guys think I'm taking a weekend off, you are absolutely crazy because I post on the weekends too. The only tech show that posts on Saturdays and Sundays. Just saying. But um, welcome back everybody. Hope you guys are having an excellent, excellent day. Uh, I've been doing nothing but on Twitter making top 10 lists, which uh, have been pretty good, but uh, boring. So today's episode, we're only going to cover three stories, and the main story is actually going to be at the end of the episode, because I want to get the first two things out of the way, so bear with me on this, but if you, want, if you don't want to hear about it, I'll leave a timestamp in the description where you can get to the main topic of the story. But with that said, let's get it going. So story number one, first story up of the day, let's kick it up with Xiaomi. Now, just now, Xiaomi has released their brand new Mi 10, Mi 10 Pro 5G, their brand new flagship smartphones, and uh, yeah, that's... So uh, that's about it. <clears throat> I mean, if you were expecting me to go raving and, and craving about Xiaomi's flagship and stuff, honestly, there's really no, uh, uh, how do I say this? There's really no enthusiasm. Sure, it's a good phone. It, it has good specs. It has everything you would want in a Xiaomi phone, but it's really no different to what we're seeing from Samsung, OnePlus. So I feel like that hype that everybody builds up these other tech companies from China is starting to die down because everything that's happening now is just, it's coming over to America. But the one cool thing that Xiaomi did release was that they do support 65 watts of super, super fast charging. That is incredible. And also 30 watts of fast wireless charging. That, that is impressive. Now that is how you do fast charging on wireless. That is pretty good. Now the price of these smartphones are in the foreign market, but you can do the conversions. And I was watching Twitter and everybody's flipping out about it. It put the regular 10 prices at $799 and the bigger version, $999. And everybody on Twitter is like, oh, it's too expensive. When did they get like this? And I'm just like, guys, welcome to America. Right. And also, there was another thing on Twitter, Jonathan Marson was on the presentation for Xiaomi, and I saw a lot of people saying, congratulations, he deserved it, what a way, happy to see my man. People, this is his job, he's been doing it for years, what does this make any difference? Like, seriously, you're congratulating a guy who's known for doing this stuff, and he makes videos every day. Just like MKBHD and everybody else, but the only difference is, they are not the average consumer, they are just them. So. I don't know, but that's the Xiaomi Mi 10 and Mi 10 Pro. If you want a little bit of tech specs, Snapdragon 865, eight gigabytes of RAM, 6.7 inch display. You also get 5G on the other version, so you have a non 5G and a regular 5G and 108 megapixel sensor. So that's a quick breakdown. Let's keep it going. Story number two, let's talk MacBook. Now, I am a big fan of the Mac. Whether you wanna argue with me about them being overpriced or whatever, have you not, I don't care. I am just a fan of Mac OS. I'm not talking about the Mac book, just Mac OS, the software. I would wish that Apple would release it, but that's how they would make money. But it turns out something that I've been talking about for a while, if Apple was to make their custom owned CPUs and put them in MacBooks, it would honestly save them so much money, but also it would just be reasonable. Cause if you look at what their CPUs are able to do in smartphones and tablets, it makes sense. Well, it looks like that wish is finally coming true because according to Ming-Chi Kuo, the new MacBook starting in 2021 will have ARM-based CPUs custom made by Apple. Now, I am gonna say this right now. I love Apple CPUs. You cannot argue with me and tell me that there are other CPUs better than Apple's, with the exception of probably Intel and maybe AMD, maybe. But if we're talking solely for smartphones and tablets and things like that, you can't tell me Apple doesn't make some good CPUs. Those CPUs are built to last, depending on your software update, of course. But it is interesting that they're doing this for Macs because not only will this cut down the cost of using Intel CPUs, but maybe finally MacBooks can be a little bit affordable, 
Eh, probably not. But on the bright side though, now we can fully see how Apple's performances stack up with their own products. Now you really have Apple's software and hardware integration. Now they know how to optimize perfectly for the Macs, now for the iPads, the iPhones, the Apple Watch. What else? I mean, really, what else do they need to do? And also in a quick follow up to that, they also will be supporting USB four, I believe the protocol, USB F4, that will allow for faster download speeds and upload speeds or whatever from the USB-C port, all that good stuff. But <clears throat> the main point is the ARM-based chip. So that's the main two stories. Now let's kick it over to the main story of the day, Apple killing the lightning port and killing the charging port as a whole. Now, yesterday I talked about how Apple was reportedly going to be you know, bringing back air power, supposedly working on prototypes, as reported by John Prosher. And John put in the article, the reason that Apple was doing this was so they can push a wireless future, and that future involves removing the charging port as a whole. Now, I'm here to tell you that that is a big, big mistake, but this is all my opinion, but it is also some logistic facts in here. So, <clears throat> let me explain to you guys why I believe Apple killing the charging port is a big mistake. <clears throat> One second. <laughs> anyway, first reason is simple. Wireless charging for Apple is insufficient. Their charging speeds are nowhere compared to the competition. Xiaomi is doing 30 watts. Samsung is at 15 watts. And it baffles me that they're still doing 7.5 watts when realistically, they don't need to be making 7.5 watt chargers. And I don't get it because they try to do everything through the software, but it's really the hardware, in my opinion, anyway. So Apple wireless future isn't shaping out in terms of charging speed, that's one. Number two, the lightning port, as outdated and proprietor as it is, it does the job well for the ecosystem. Everything that has lightning ports and dongles and stuff makes Apple money. That is their proprietorship port. They make so much money on licensing, giving other third party users MF certifications. So by taking off the lightning port is not only a business move on their end to not give into USB-C, but it's also they can still make money by selling their own wireless chargers. But that's another reason, number three. Most of the average consumers do not have a wireless charger. Now, don't hit me at the comments saying you have a wireless charger because that's you, but you do not speak for the average consumer. As a matter of fact, the people in the comment section of an Unbox Therapy video, MKBHD, Jonathan Morrison, and any many other YouTubers, even Apple Sheeps, they are not the average consumer. The average consumer are people that are like me and every other people that buy phones regularly. Not every year, not every second, just regularly. I'm sure that they probably eventually will make the switch, but right now it costs at some points, if you really want a good wireless charger, you could cost up to $80. Now there are some other alternatives, but still wireless chargers, are just basically an add-on with the charging port because most of them use USB-C for power supply. And the last reason why I think it's a mistake, and it's really simple, everybody is going to follow. They are gonna do the same damn thing. So once Apple removed the headphone jack, it gave everybody volume and reason to start removing it off the phone and push Bluetooth. Now, if Apple removes the lightning port, I guarantee you by 2024, because I think Apple's gonna do this in a year or two, but by 2024, most smartphone manufacturers are gonna start doing that. And that is a big mistake because first of all, you gotta put wireless charging mats in the box, in expensive ones anyway, which already cost more than the cable. Next thing, USB-C can charge your phone so much more faster and is more efficient. You use CarPlay, Android Auto with these things. I don't understand how manufacturers can do what Apple does. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If they keep on following what Apple does, they are not leaders, they are just the followers. Because if Apple had the balls to remove it and you did it after them, you didn't do anything smarter just as much as they did. So every other smartphone manufacturer is gonna follow this trend and it's a sad, sad trend because if they remove the charging port, it's gonna suck because I know a lot of people that use it for audio, charging, etc. So the USB-C port on other phones, if they decide to do that, if Apple removes the lightning port, there you go. But the main reason I really think Apple would remove it is again, like I said, they wouldn't make money off the port, they could sell more charging pads, 
and that's it. And this is just some of the things of why it's a mistake. There are some other things I haven't talked about in this video, like how you're gonna transfer data through a pad. How are you gonna send things? AirDrop can only send a limited amount. So here's what I'll tell you. If you guys agree with me that it is a mistake and see any other points about Apple removing the charging port from the phones and if other manufacturers are gonna do it, comment your thoughts down below. Let me know what do you see as a mistake. And as always guys, that's it for, for the episode. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below. As always, guys, stay safe, and I will see you guys tomorrow, so peace.